Our greatest weakness lies in giving up. The most certain way to succeed is always to try just one more time. In this video, I'm going to show you how $1,700 trillion is headed to the crypto space on crypto ledgers. This includes HBAR, Algorand, XRP, Matic, and others. A CSD, or Centralized Security Depository, called Montus, is getting ready to issue European equities, bonds, art, real estate, all on public ledgers. The things developing. In terms of move up a level, um, we actually get to a point whereby we have a single ledger, which is the Montus ledger, sitting there, and it, it detects if JP Morgan has been using Onyx and someone else, HSBC, has been using Orion or You've probably seen the news that BlackRock was going to issue shares on Archax and Hedera Hashgraph, but that was just the tip of the iceberg. You see, Archax and Montes Group are tied together, and Archax is integrated into the XRP ledger, HBAR, Algorand, Matic, and others. So those integrations happen because their clients wanted those integrations, and that tells you where they're going to be issuing shares of equities. now. Montes Group is a CSD. We used to get pieces of paper that would literally be shares on a piece of paper. Now, there are these big centralized servers or central security depository that holds everyone's shares for them, and they know who the legal owner of what is. Uh, on a global basis, uh, of an enormous size in terms of the value, the types of instruments, uh, you can have equities, bonds, um, uh, you can have different funds, you can have, and that's before we even look at derivative markets and so on. But the Montes Group is targeting the European Union and their headquarters in this Luxembourg. They're going to first start out in Luxembourg and issuing tokenized bonds, tokenized securities. And it turns out that Luxembourg has a rich history in bond issuance, and it has 40% of all cross-border securities in Europe listed in Luxembourg. So Luxembourg is a hub in the European Union. Now, the European Union has a lot of different stock markets, and this is measured in the thousands of billions of dollars range. So there is a lot of wealth in the European Union and European stock markets, but specifically Luxembourg is known for their debt issuance for cross-border. So Montes Group is starting off in Luxembourg and expanding outwards globally, and their role is to determine who has the security and who has the cash. Now, before we continue this show, I'd like to take a moment to thank Incogni. Incogni is a sponsor of this show. and What they do is they reach out to data brokerages and ask specifically to have your data removed from their data brokerages. You see, most of Western civilization has agreed that what they're doing with data collection is wrong. And if you specifically ask to have your data removed from their data brokerage, they are forced to. So Incogni reaches out to every single data brokerage that is out there and says, I want to remove Darren Moore's data from your database. Now, you could do this for free. You could reach out personally to every single data brokerage and ask them. However, Incogni does this all at the click of a button, and it's all automated. So you don't have to talk to anyone. It just literally just emails every data brokerage and says that they want to remove you. Not to mention, they're constantly updating their list. They're constantly looking for new data brokerages, and they do all this work for you. If you use my link, incogni.com slash Darren, you'll get a special discount as well as a 30-day money-back guarantee. But you'll also be helping the show. So be sure to check out incogni.com slash Darren. When you then look at the addressable market for tokens, it actually dwarfs that market because not only have you got the existing capital markets out there and you can tokenize the vast majority of it, but you then start getting into real world assets. You start getting into real estate. You start getting into art. You get, start getting into a whole range of new um, instruments which can be tokenized. So the opportunity that sits in front of us uh, is a quite incredible opportunity to tokenize the existing markets. But ironically, and this is where Montes is different, we're also supporting the conventional. 
This man's name is Martin Watkins, and this guy used to work for Euroclear, Euronext. He was a technologist for Euronext, which Euroclear is one of the biggest stock markets in the world. It's the EU stock market, so it's the second largest in the world. He was developing technology for that stock market, and he completely changed his career to the Montes Group, which is using blockchain technology. It's using crypto assets. It's integrated into a bunch of different public ledgers. And he's telling you that the opportunity is immense. $1,700 trillion is coming on chain. That represents the legacy financial system. But what happens is you have to account for 2% inflation year over year over year. So that means compounding interest. So times it by point. 0 0.02, 0 0.02, and just keep going with it because that's what is really at stake. And we talked about the traditional financial system, but we also need to talk about the digital world, right? So imagine artificial intelligence paired with quantum computing. It's extracting algorithms and creating medicine specific to certain people's genomes. And it's minting that directly on chain. And there's a constant stream of value being minted on chain. This will cause wallet creation, burning tokens, and it will have a positive effect on the supply demand dynamic. Because it's no good having people holding something on a digital format, a digital token in one world, and then the conventional original instrument, they've got securities and so on. They've got to hold somewhere completely different. That's that's a crazy world to have. So the differentiation we've got is we've been uh, designing systems and capability to actually combine the two and handle the two as if... The Montes Group is going to start out with equities. They're going to start out with equities in Europe because the micro-regulations are in place and they said they're going to have clarity and they're going to have their licenses by summer. And they're going to start off with Luxembourg and spread out. The European stock market, bond market, all of the real world value in Europe is coming on chain. And that is a very large market. Just think about the euro dollar market. That is the standard. And the euro part is one half of the reserve system. Tokenized Aberdeen's fund in the past. Um, we've tokenized UK equities. So a couple of UK's e equities. We've tokenized gilts. We've got two stable coins we're working on, both US dollars. One of them's got an associated stake stable coin and the governance token as well. So there's a bunch of stuff we're doing. We developed our own tokenization engine. So Hedera is one of the chains we can tokenize on, as well as Algorand, Ethereum, Polygon, XRPL. You know, we tend to be commercially driven. If our clients say put it on this chain, then then we put it on the chain they choose. Otherwise, we kind of work with one of our partners. If you're unaware, Archax recently released a press release saying that they were issuing money market funds that were hosted by BlackRock, that were issued by BlackRock on the Hedera hash graph. And this caused a lot of controversy. I believe Cointelegraph was putting out FUD articles about this announcement, but BlackRock very much was involved. They were approving the PR statements. They were doing a lot of things. But the reason why this BlackRock fund got issued on Hedera Hashgraph was because of the investors. The investors specifically asked Archax to issue it on Hedera Hashgraph. So it's really up to the investors and the users because there were specific investors of the of the money market fund that wanted it on Hedera Hashgraph. So that's what Archax minted it on. But they have the integrations for the XRP ledger, Tezos, Algorand, and other protocols. So they're not they're not limited. This is going to be a great use case and it's going to spread to the utility assets, quite frankly. And the people that are investing in them are the ones that determine what ledgers they issue these equities on. And this is going to cause an array of technologists to run towards the towards those ledgers because the total value locked has increased exponentially a securities settlement system and this is under law the part that legally transfers you either own the asset now or you've owned the cash and you no longer own the asset so that's a legal certainty that we give absolutely critical if you could imagine any trade you want to do you want to know that you own it and you want to know the instant you as a management team we know what the incumbent csds what the issues are we we know and we've worked the markets and we've helped run the markets to understand what the problems are. But the markets themselves have to exist as they are. 
And there's a lot of frustration that the incumbents are not transforming to a digital world quick enough. And in fact, it's in their interest, in part, to slow it down. So that's why we built Montes CSDs. People that work for the incumbents later work for the government and then create the laws that are legislating the incumbents. So you have this revolving door from private to public sector. And that's what we've seen over the years. And that's why we're seeing the incumbents purposely put roadblocks in decentralization because they have a top-down approach already. And decentralization messes that all up. So what we're seeing here is the Montes Group is creating their digital post trade services. And you see Arch Hacks with custody. That's why Ripple ran out and bought Medico and gave up on PolySci because the custody aspect is crucial with equities and digital assets. So custody solution, but also you see the connectivity. The connectivity is also important. And you see the central banks. The central banks are going to issue CBDCs at one point, or they can issue CBDCs directly on some of these ledgers. So we'll probably see a model like this for central bank digital currency. Timing is perfect. The ECB is talking about the digital euro. At the same time, the Montes Group is tokenizing the entire stock market and debt market of the EU. We've applied for our licenses in Luxembourg, and I'll explain why in a moment. Um, and we believe that with the big, with the increasing amount of demand that's coming from financial institutions towards tokenization, that we're ahead of the curve. We've got our applications in, we've designed digital services for a digital world, whereas the incumbents are sitting in an analog environment. And we've built our DLT base, so it's blockchain based minimum viable product. We're ready to go and we're pushing for our regulatory authorization, which we expect to get uh, by the summer or even just before. Montes Group will have their last license right at summer or right before. Now, if they tokenize enough equities and they, they tokenize enough bonds and they put enough total value locked on chain, this is news that can move the markets. Hedera Hashgraph doubled in value the second BlackRock news was announced. So this is the same type of announcement coming in summer because they're getting their license in the summer and so on around tokenizing their funds and tokenizing their bonds. And we're also working with a number of the global custodians delivering on their numbers with their volumes and their values, 45% savings on some of their key areas of post-trade cost. And that gets passed through to the investors as well. So they have global ambitions, 26 countries that are going to have an alliance with Luxembourg. Our differentiation starts in Luxembourg. And the key bit here is we've got global ambitions, but we're leveraging the laws and the regulatory certainty that already exists. In Luxembourg, we can serve the whole of the European Union, that's all 27 countries, from one location, and we are permitted to put digital securities, which are financial instruments, which your, your existing financial institution can hold for you, and we can service those and have those recorded on our blockchain. So we start in Luxembourg because that's where the regulations are strongest. The UK has just opened up uh, a similar approach. So that's why we're meeting with the Bank of England. And we're looking at the third expansion during this year into Asia Pacific, which will either be Hong Kong or Singapore. The EU, England, Hong Kong, or Singapore. Now, this is going to create a global marketplace, and this is going to be the need for a neutral bridge asset, a neutral settlement asset, because you're going to have global markets with all different types of currencies, all different types of assets, and the use case of having a decentralized neutral bridge asset will come into play. That's how we see things developing. In terms of move up a level, um, we actually get to a point whereby we have a single ledger, which is the Montes ledger, sitting there, and it, it detects if JP Morgan has been using Onyx and someone else, HSBC has been using Orion or City have used Polygon or whatever else, we detect state change, and that simply updates our record. You no longer have the batch systems. You no longer have to send information out. We detect the state change. We change the ownership, and that's the world we see it moving to. The technical capability and financial capability is there to do it, and the innovation probably take the law and the regulators and so on, I would say 
five, six, seven years to be comfortable with us operating in that way, but we can already do it. Five to six years, that means that we are still extremely early, but their license is coming through in the summertime. So they're going to start in the summertime. They're going to chip away at the $1,700 trillion in, in assets that are coming on chain. This is a huge opportunity, and there is plenty of room for growth, and we're still early. If you think about those that structured products discussions that we've been having, Mark, one bank, 5,000 instruments issued per day of a structured product at scale. And that's only one, and that's only in one market, in one of the European markets. You put that across the 27 countries and put it across the 10 major banks in that, in that, uh, that operate in that market. That's enormous. That's scale where it's coming. So I guess the catalyst is actually we, together with the Swiss uh, Stock Exchange, are making it happen. Montes Group is seizing a $1,700 trillion asset class. They're going for the licenses and they're getting licenses in order to take on EU's debt market, their stock market, and then they're going to start taking over the world and trying to take all financial assets, tokenize them on their ledger, and then build bridges onto other ledgers where they're able to interact with the other ledgers and send call signals to know where the tokens are or to know where the cash is. Now, this is unheard of. CSDs are usually dry, stiff institutions. They're not in the technology space. And we're seeing this CSD dive right in. They're getting all of their licenses and the team knows what they're doing. They've worked on, on with CSDs in the past. CSDs are the issuers of equities. So this is this is going to pick up pace rapidly. And we know by summertime we should see some news that Montes Group got their license and is issued. Success is not the absence of failure. It's the persistence through failure. Thanks everyone. I hope you enjoyed the show. Please take a moment to like and subscribe. If you enjoy content like this, please consider joining my Patreon or my ghost site, dmjr.ghost.io. Thanks guys.